Girdwood Forest Fair is the first major fair that we do during fair season. It takes place uh, on July 4th weekend, and it's a great little craft, arts, music festival fair. And I usually need to have about 12 to 15 boxes worth of pottery to fill the shelves correctly. So it takes a little bit of time to get ready for it. And I would say the fastest I've ever gotten enough product, almost from scratch, I had to once start in June, and that was really pushing it. So that gave me you know, four weeks, basically, to throw enough stuff for it. Uh, and I use the the boxes that I'm referring to are the what are they roughneck tubs. And they're all like a rubbery plastic. So they hold a decent amount of uh, pottery. So right now I'm throwing mugs in preparation for that fair. A lot of times now I'm starting earlier because I have to also make enough stuff for the Fairbanks Fair and then the Palmer Fair, and both of those take place in August and come very quickly and rapidly onto each other. So I need to always have a overstock of product. So a lot of times my work schedule is in March I start doing uh, the orders for galleries and so forth for the coming tourist season. Try to get those all done and out by mid-April and then immediately start moving into fair production time. The more stuff you have, the better off you are. It just seems how it works at fairs. So May and June and making quite a bit of stuff and then in July I end up making what I don't have enough of after the Girdwood Fair for the Fairbanks Fair that is at the very start of August and then the Palmer Fair is at the uh, near the end of August and for those you have to have a lot of pottery because the number of people that go through those fairs is higher than say Girdwood but like I said, Girdwood's a nice little fair. It's only three days, and you're pretty much busy selling a lot of the time, and that's that's great. It's pain and very fain to be there myself today. I'm wishing in my heart I was far away from here. Sitting in my parlor, talking with my dear, and it's home, dear. done so I had to you know throw throw a lot of mugs I would say I take at least 150 mugs to Girdwood so that takes a little while to make plus all the ones and you need a good variety between white and brown and all that stuff here I'm trimming a bowl. It's a mixed clay bowl, so it's different clays all thrown as one. And here I'm trimming the foot of it. Again, you need to have enough different pieces and so forth, so that 150 mugs probably uses up five or so of my boxes, so I need at least ten, usually nine to ten boxes of other things. Just a mixture from Bowls, casseroles, serving bowls, plates, vases, pie plates, all the various things that I make. Are all a growing green in the north country, and it's home. Said, if we have a boy or girl, got me so confused. 
not only do I have to throw the mugs, but then I also have to pull all the handles for the mugs. And here I'm just pulling some handles in preparation for Girdwood. Then of course you have to attach them all, and let them all dry, and so forth. So it's, it's a bit of a, a long process to get it all done. That's why you need months of preparation. One handle made, and a lot more to go. Like his daddy used to do, and it's home, dear home. Oh, it's home I want to be. The top sails are hoisted, and I'm out to see the oak and the ash and the bonny birch and tree. And here, Mara is actually going to be putting on the handle. She's going to go over everything she does here. I believe it was my daughter taking the video, so forgive us if it's a little unsteady. So we let the mugs dry about leather hard, then I trim them. And then we also, I pull the handles and then Mara will take those handles when they're a bit drier and attach them to said mugs. the clay and apply water in order to make the clay stick together. And then you have to press it home, use a bit more water, smooth it out, get the correct angle of the handle to the mug to get the right shape. attach our little thumb uh, rest, make and attach it. Quite clearly I'm trimming a vase. When I first trim a vase, I don't cut a vase off the bat initially so that I can just attach the bat to the wheel and go ahead and trim at a certain point when I think it's ready. I detach it from the bat or if it just comes off on its own, then I have to use the Giffen Grip. You're guessing at that point about how heavy it is because it's hard to determine how heavy it is with the bat still attached. I found that trimming a vase in sections seems to work better on the Giffen Grip than trying to trim it all at the same time.
Hey everybody, Mara here. Um, I am getting ready to trim some sponge holders, so I figured I'd take a little video and show you guys that process. So they start out as small cylinders like this, and the finished project product it looks like this. So we actually cut out the sides and glaze and add some glass into the bottom. So I'm going to show you that process. So the first part is just like a mug. We want to trim the bottom and the sides to get off some excess weight and some add some shape to it. So we're going to start with that. So the trimming tools that we use for this are a circle trimmer. Hopefully you can see that it's in the shape of a circle that's going to help us do the sides and the top. And then we're going to have also an angle trimmer. So it's got um, it's more of a straight line here. That's going to help us make a nice little angle um, at the bottom. Just adds a decorative lip and also gives us a place to put our main Alaska stamp. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. The most important part about the bottom, we're not really trimming a lot because Dave tends to throw the bottoms very thin. We're just leveling out and giving it a nice level bottom to sit on your counter or your sink edge. So you always want to start in the middle and you're just slowly pulling your trimming tool out to the side. I'm going to make a couple passes here and then we'll check. You always want to brace. I don't want to just go like this because that's going to allow my clay uh, to move my tool. So I'm going to brace the tool with my second hand. Push it in a little bit more and I'll start again. There we go. I am going to take one pass from the outside in. Alright. Now I'm going to brace it with this hand to keep it down. Passes on the outside. And again, we're just doing this to add shape and take a little of the weight off. I'm going to switch to my other tool to make that little lip. So I'm just going to do this right here. I'll go a little slower if I can. Alright. I'm going to loosen the cushion grip. I'll reshape a little bit because I deformed it when I tightened it. So now I'm going to check the balance of it. So it's a little wobbly, what you can do is slide it back and forth and then when you look at the bottom, you can see here where it's just colored a little bit. That's where it's a little taller than the rest of it. So you can take your needle tool, instead of going and trimming again, I'm just going to scrape those parts and see if I can't level it out that way. That's much better. All right. So what I'm going to do now is actually cut the sides out. So back when I first started doing these, I had a really hard time remembering which portions you actually cut out. So we take one of our um, knives that we use. It's very dull, so we use it for the clay a lot. I'm gonna take it, push down. Stop, not all the way through, but most of the way. Turn and do the other side as well. Try 
try to get as close as possible. So, when I first started doing these, I would cut these portions off. That is not what we want to cut off. We want to cut this portion off. So, I'll take my needle tool and see, I have to connect these two lines here. So I'm just going to take my needle tool. slowly cut through. It just flops like that. So I'll turn and do the other side. And it falls away as well. So you can see that's where the sponge is actually going to go. And we don't want these edges to be sharp. So you just run your finger over a little bit. I'm going to do that on all four sides. And I'm going to take my needle tool and clean up this edge here. Do the same thing here. And clean up this edge. This one too. Flip it over. We have our handy dandy, can't really see it, but it says made in Alaska. And I gently press this into that edge we made. And it says on there, made in Alaska. So there it is, guys. That's the step by step instructions. And I've got a lot to do, so we're gonna get going here. Thanks so much. Hopefully you've enjoyed part one of getting ready for the Beardwood Forest Fair. In the next part we're going to have firing, glazing, and decorating, and packing. So catch us then.